Torah takes us back to the dawn of time itself. We're introduced to Adam and Eve enjoying the splendor, the grandeur, the beauty of the Garden of Eden. A wash in light, in lush greenery, surrounded by water. But almost as soon as we are introduced to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, we're suddenly confronted with their banishment. Not only are they banished from the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve look back and see that at the entrance to the Garden, this beautiful, beautiful place, are now two fiery swords. Says the Madrash, Adam saw those swords and he feared having children. He feared having progeny because he wondered how can we ever make our way back to the Garden of Eden. The Hebrew word for the sword <laughs> described in the Torah, Cherev Hamisalpethes, this very, very fear, fearful and gruesome sword, fire. And so the matter says that Adam had an epiphany, and that was that 26 generations hence, his progeny will have access to a sword more powerful than the sword that rotates at the entrance to Eden. And that will be the sword of the Torah, as the Torah is described as the cherev, the weapon, the sword of the Jewish people. And with that, Adam was consoled. With that, Adam had faith Jewish nation, knowing the strength of the Torah that we will derive our eternity and our resilience from. Friends, <clears throat> in the summer of 2005, Rabbi Denberg and I, and a number of other Chabad rabbis, led a mission to Israel. It was late July of 2005 and we made made it a point on this mission to go to Gaza to see for ourselves the Jewish communities of Bush Katif. My friends, we came to Gaza, we came to Bush Katif and what we saw was a slice of Gang Eden of paradise here on earth. Beautiful Mediterranean villas overlooking the shimmering waves of the Mediterranean. Lush greenhouses for backyards. Children riding their bicycles in the street. Beautiful shoes, beautiful schools. But two weeks later, all of those beautiful residents found themselves too expelled from the Garden of Eden in which they lived. And in its place, and in its place, at its very entry, swords of terror. So gripped with fear, we ask ourselves, as Rabbi Denberg addressed the Torah, so emphatically addresses the fear factor. With what do we confront the enemy? It is not coincidence that they chose to attack on Simchas Torah, the most joyous day of the year. 
but they underestimated the joy of the Torah, the power of the Torah. The Torah is our sword. The Torah is more powerful than any enemy in the world. It is from the Torah, from the very first verse of the Torah that we read this week, in which we stake our claim to this land unabashedly before the world, and we say, Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim et haaretz God created heaven and earth. And as Rashi says, why does the Torah begin with this verse to tell us? That as God is the creator, it is His discretion to assign the land of Israel to the people of Israel. And we will never forsake this claim to the land of Israel. But I want to tell you something else about the sword of Torah. How it has this ability to cut to the core of who we are, and I mean in a powerful way. Our custom in Ispoga on Simchas Torah every year, for the last dance, for the last Takafa, we march out of Chabad, make a ride on North East First Avenue, and march proudly in song down the center of Meisner Park, to the center fountain of Meisner Park. And that's where we dance and celebrate the last dance. It's usually busy, but particularly so on a Saturday night as it was this year. And we danced, and as typically happens, people sitting by the restaurants and the bars hear the song, see the dance, and join in. And as we are about to leave, my daughter Sarah saw four teenagers standing, watching the festivities. She goes over to them and asks, are any of you Jewish? Three of them said, no. The fourth one said, uh, my parents are Jewish, but I know. To which my daughter said, is your mother Jewish? Your mother's Jewish? If your mother's Jewish, I got news for you. <laughs> you're Jewish. And the friends are going, dude, you're Jewish. <laughs> so what's, what's going on here? My daughter says, we're dancing with the Torah. This newly discovered Jewish kid says, what's that? She said, the Torah? The Torah is the God's gift to the Jewish people, to you, and to me, and to every Jew. And tonight, we celebrate it. And now I would like to invite you to come and join in this circle of dancing and hold the Torah that is rightfully yours. He hesitated for a moment until his friend said, Dude, this is your Torah. Go celebrate it! And this newly discovered Jewish kid found himself in the circle of dancers. Alon was actually standing in the back there, took off his hat, planted on his head. He was an instant chosid. <laughs> and he danced with the Torah like a proud Jew. in an instant, cuts its way through layers and layers and years and generations of disconnect and makes that connection. Sukhas Torah 
will never be robbed from us as the day of rejoicing. We will continue to celebrate and to rejoice the eternity of our people, the eternity of our connection to the Torah of Israel, to the people of Israel, and to the land of Israel. I'd like to now ask you to join me in prayer. A prayer that was that they may return home to their loved ones safely, securely, and speedily. If you know the song, please feel free to sing along. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 